Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Uh, today's entry, if you want to read along with it, go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. It's, delay it's dated July 17th, 2008, and it's called Dark Energy, Line Landers, and the LHC. And uh, if you uh, recognize the background here, it's actually a modification from a previous blog entry that was called What Would a Line Lander really see a line lander being a fictional one-dimensional creature and we'll talk a little bit about that in this video blog which goes like this. Over three million unique visitors have now visited the Tenth Dimension website. Thank you Tenth Dimension fans around the world. Here's a quote from Michio Kaku in his book Physics of the Impossible. He said, in science a physical picture is often more important than the mathematics used to describe it. With this quote, Michio Kaku was summing up the work of Michael Faraday, who lived from 1791 to 1867, who, with very little mathematical or scientific training but a strong visual imagination, came up with a way of describing the waves of electromagnetic energy that underlie our universe, and created the cornerstone for much of the 20th century's discoveries about the nature of our reality. Since my project is also about a powerful way of visualizing how our reality is constructed and incorporates the idea of patterns and waves across the dimensions as being key to that process, Dr. Kaku's quote struck quite a chord for me. With that in mind, this time around I'd like to talk a little more about dark energy and dark matter. Now in the blog entry, Dark Matter, Dark Energy, Dark Information, we looked at the astonishing fact that 96% of our universe is invisible and undetectable dark energy and dark matter. What a strange situation science is caught in right now. Some have expressed hopes that the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is scheduled to go online this summer, may reveal evidence of extra dimensions or the source of dark matter and energy. But the astonishingly huge amounts of data, 15 trillion gigabytes per year, that the LHC will be collecting means it will still be a while until that evidence is analyzed and the findings revealed. We have two poll questions currently running that ask visitors' opinions on what the LHC is going to find. Please be sure to go there and cast your vote. In the meantime, let's talk a little more about how this way of visualizing reality that we're playing with here might be used to portray the missing parts of our universe. Coincidentally, the current edition of What is Enlightenment magazine interviews five prominent physicists about dark matter and dark energy. Uh, let's look at a couple of quotes from that article. First of all, from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He said, If you add up all the matter and energy in the universe, it comes to just 4% of all that drives cosmic expansion. So we're clueless with no idea about what occupies the remaining 96% of the universe. And that's Neil deGrasse Tyson said that, astrophysicist, author, and director of New York's Hayden Planetarium. And uh, now let's quote Jan Levin from that same article in What is Enlightenment magazine, who said, I've been interested whether or not the dark energy could come from extraspatial dimensions, where a kind of vibration in those multidimensional spaces creates this energy that's felt everywhere in the universe. Now with dark matter, it would be nice if it connected to dark energy in some way, and it wasn't just a completely separate random piece of information about the universe. It would be nice if it were somehow a different side of the same coin. And that's quoting uh, from Jan Levin, theoretical cosmologist, author, and professor of physics and astronomy at Bernard College of Columbia University. Now with my way of visualizing how our reality is constructed, we're looking at a way to explain dark energy and dark matter and how they are both related to the mainstream physics idea that gravity is the only force that exerts itself across the extra dimensions. So let's go back now and uh, look at the, some of the concepts from the original Imagining the Tenth Dimension animation in a little more detail. Uh, there's a blog entry that talks about those ideas. It's uh, called Flatlanders on a Line. And uh, whatever video viewing site that you're, you happen to be at, uh, that's a blog entry you should be able to see. Or if you search for Flatlanders on, on a Line in Google, in quotes, uh, it should come up fairly quickly for you too. In Flatlanders on a Line, we talked through the logic of this project's visualization tool more deeply and how the ray of the fifth dimensional probability set from any current now is, of course, much more complex than the simple line branch fold that I'm using to build our image of the extra dimensions. This relates back to the ideas Edwin Abbott was introducing 
us to with his original, Flatland, The Romance of Many Dimensions. Using what we know of the limitations and interrelationships of the lower dimensions can help us to build a concept of the additional dimensions. Abbott talked about the imaginary worlds of the Linelanders, living on a one-dimensional line, the Flatlanders, living on a two-dimensional plane, and the Spacelanders, which would be three-dimensional creatures like us. Most people have drawn the conclusion that Abbott's concept of the befuddled 2D flatlander trying to imagine a fantastically improbable world of three dimensions is useful for us as three-dimensional creatures trying to imagine the fourth spatial dimension. The idea that we've arrived at with this project, though, is that it's even more valuable for us to think of the one-way arrow of time as one of the two possible directions in the fourth dimension as being like the limited one-dimensional world of the Linelander. And uh, right now, if you are uh, looking at this in the video blog, you'll be looking at, uh, or I'm sorry, in the, in the original text version of the blog, you'll be looking at uh, what would a Linelander really see. Again, uh, another one of the video blogs that you can find if you search for those words. In what would a Linelander really see, we tried to visualize the highly limited viewpoint of a creature living on a one-dimensional line. Now, let's imagine our 3D universe as a sphere, and a one-dimensional line passing someplace within that sphere. If you were a point on that line, in what direction would you perceive the third dimension to be? Clearly, it would be all around you, pulling equally on you from every side. Of course, as a point on a line someplace within that sphere, the source of whatever was pulling on you from that 3D world would be very mysterious indeed, and you wouldn't even have a name for the direction that this mysterious force was coming from. Now, what if your one-dimensional line was really part of a 2D plane, and there were a large object nearby you on that plane? Two things would happen. From the point of view of the first dimension, the gravity of that object would tend to be more localized and would tend to bunch things together rather than pull things apart. In fact, because the object was only one dimension away, it would almost be like there was an invisible gravitational material or an invisible force pulling together on a part of your one-dimensional line. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now let's go back to us as 4D Linelanders. Cosmologists are now mapping dark matter throughout the universe and finding evidence of higher and lower concentrations of this invisible matter based upon its gravitational signature. Imagine the fifth dimension as being like the 2D plane our 1D Linelander was being influenced by shows how dark matter really could be in the fifth dimension, with higher and lower concentrations that are part of the neighboring bits of the multiverse that are just around the corner, at that additional right angle that the fifth dimension would be to the fourth, creating areas of higher gravity that, by virtue of their existence in the fifth dimension, have become part of the dark matter that has kept our universe from flying apart as quickly as cosmologists would have expected it to. And what about the mysterious force of dark energy, which now drives our universe apart, uniformly in every direction? If you're following along here, I hope you can see the logic of my conclusion. Dark energy has to be from the sixth dimension and above, and is much like the pulling in every direction that a 1D Linelander would experience as the 3D sphere of our universe pulling on or pulled him from directions that he's incapable of perceiving or even conceiving of. Now my song The Unseen Eye talked about dark matter as well. Uh, the lyrics uh, to part of that song were, and the missing dark matter that binds the universe, the mysterious mass that science cannot find, is in the many worlds of possibility that are just around the corner in time. So uh, let's look at one of the videos for that song, and uh, after it's over, we'll come back and uh, talk about it a little bit more. This video was created by uh, Ryan Hill and myself. It's called The Unseen Eye.
the deep, it reveals such beauty, reveals the soul. So does it make a difference how we got to what we see? If it's real, ain't just coincidence, it's still the one this thing, and we know it's the end of observation. Again, that was The Unseen Eye. That's one of the 26 songs that have been created for this project, Imagining the Tenth Dimension, discussing various ideas uh, from the project. Will the LHC find evidence of extra dimensions? Will, as I predicted with this project, Kaluza's fifth dimension be proven to be the source of dark matter, a gravitational force from Everett's par parallel universes that are nearby to our fourth dimensional line? And will, as I've also predicted, dark energy be shown to be the gravitational attraction from the sixth dimension and above, where we can find the pulling apart to other completely different expressions of matter and energy that are found within the surrounding regions of the omniverse? These are exciting times for thinking about the nature of reality, and I can't wait to see what we discover in the upcoming few years. This is Rob Bryanton from the Imagine the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey.